Hi, in the last video, we discussed about what are the differential equations, what are the order of differential equations, and a solution of differential equations, initial value problems, interval of validity, and so on, right? So here, we discuss some more terms that are used in the differential equations. First of all, let me show you how to write a differential equation in different ways, okay? And we will talk about what do you mean by linear differential equations, non-linear differential equation, autonomous differential equation, and what do you mean by the equilibrium solutions of a differential equation, okay? So here, look at this uh, this example. This is a differential equation, right? Because it has a derivative of y with respect to x. It is given by dy over dx equals to a times y, right? And if you want to, you can bring this to the left side and then write dy over dx minus ay equals to zero, right? So this can be written as it is a function of x y and then y prime equals to zero. That's the variable we are using here, right? So that a could be a constant or a could be a function of x, function of the independent variable, okay? So you can write, this is another way of writing a differential equation. You just write the zero on the right hand side, bring everything on the left hand side and the right in the functional form, okay? Now here, what is the highest derivative used? The y prime, the first derivative is the highest derivative here, right? So this is called the first order ODE, first order ordinary differential equation because the, the derivative is used. If the partial derivative is used, then we call partial differential equation or PDE, right? So this is the first order uh, ordinary differential equation. So this is the second order of ordinary differential equation. Why? Because there is a second derivative used. That is the highest derivative is the second derivative, okay? So here, A, B, C, D are constants or function of independent variable T. Here I'm writing this D is function of T, okay? That means D depends on T. It may be DT, maybe T squared or T squared plus T or T squared plus one like that, okay? So A, B, and C may be constant or function of T, okay? But they are not function of Y, meaning A, B, C are not depending on Y, but they may depend on T in this example, okay? So this can be written as function of T, Y, Y prime, and Y double prime. That's the function they are using, right? So th these are the functions we are using here, Y, Y prime, Y double prime, okay? And then I wrote equals to zero on the right hand side. So this is the second order ordinary differential equation because the highest derivative used is y double prime. That is the second order. This is the general way of writing the second order ODE. This is the general first order ODE. There may be any value of a, any number before that, okay? So that's the sec first order ODE. This is the second order ODE. If you write down the nth order ODE, so this is the general method. This is the way to write out the write down the general nth order ODE. T, Y, Y prime, Y double prime, and then nth derivative of Y, and then equals to zero. So there may be constant used, but you don't need to write that constant, okay? Because um, this is how we generally write, all right. So what is the linear versus non-linear ODEs? So uh, the linear ODEs, uh, so first of all, let us write down the ODE, the general form, T, Y, T, Y prime of T, because all this Y depends on X here, all this Y depend on T here, because T is the independent variable, all this Y, all this Y depending on T, T is the independent variable here, okay? So this is an ODE, nth order ODE. It is said to be linear if it can be written as A0 function of T times Y, derivative nth derivative of Y, A1 T times N minus 1 derivative of Y and continue that way. So no, and then there is some function of T on the right hand side. Note that we call this linear Y because the Y term a or its derivative is coming by itself. You see that? It is coming by itself. There is no like y times y prime kind of thing. If it is the product of a function and its derivative, it is no longer a linear. 
it is no longer a linear it is non linear okay here all the terms are of a, a y by itself or its derivative by themselves okay there is no product of y and y prime or y times uh, y prime square and so on there is no y square as well so this is a first order linear ode so first order linear right this is first order but non-linear why it is first order because the highest derivative is one so first order but it is non-linear why because there is y square the exponent of y is more than one right so what it is not derivative. if it is in the derivative i would write y double prime or inside the parenthesis okay first order non-linear so how about this ah uh, this is first order and this is non-linear either because there is a times here this is the one term that makes it non-linear there is another one it is root y it is non-linear either okay so this is first order o r d e r and non-linear and how about this one this is second order linear right because see this root is for the coefficient here not for y y is by itself here is also y prime by itself y double prime by itself so it is second order and then linear because there is no product of y's right so it is second order linear so this is how we determine whether a given equation is of certain order and whether it is linear or non-linear look at this uh this general uh generic equation here for the non-linear for the linear equation if the right hand side is zero meaning if all of the terms have y or the derivative of y by themselves and if there is no separate constant or a function of t terms we call homogeneous okay if the right hand side is not zero then it is non-homogeneous for example this one it is non-homogeneous because the right hand side is not zero non-homogeneous 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 so what is the example of homogeneous if you write like y prime plus 3y square equals to 0 it is homogeneous okay or you write y prime equals to 3y it is also homogeneous because you can bring it to the left right y prime minus 3y equals to 0 so why can't you so you may ask what happens if i bring this gt on the left side so this gt is free from y right so if there is no term without y then it is homogeneous or y or any derivative of y right see there is no term without y or derivative of y so all of the terms here have either y or the derivative of y so this is homogeneous so this is not homogeneous because there is y prime plus 3y but there is extra term without y so this is non-homogeneous okay so non-homogeneous 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 all right so uh, this is how we decide whether a uh, whether a uh, um, uh, uh, equation is linear or non-linear. So uh, homogeneous or non-homogeneous. Next is autonomous equation. If a differential equation does not depend explicitly on independent variable, it is called autonomous. So what is the independent variable here? Y is dependent variable. T is independent variable. You see that there is no T on the right hand side, right? So there is no t anywhere explicitly there is no explicit t so it is called the autonomous equation so if you write this way in the functional form this is a function of y and y prime there is no explicit t we know that y depends on t but there is no t seen here explicitly right see other equations we have like function of t y y prime there is t there you see that if there is t Oh, by the way, this is also, there is no T also explicitly, it, there is no T here because we are, A, we are assuming this is a constant here. If you assume A as a constant, then there is no T here, right? But what kind of equation is non-autonomous? Then if you write like dy over dt equals to T times Y or 5T times Y. So there is T explicitly seeing there. You, you can see that T explicitly uh, used there so it is non-autonomous 
So if there is like 7t here as well, this is non-autonomous. But if you remove that t, it is autonomous because I don't see any t here explicitly. Although these derivatives are function of t, but they are not explicitly written as t there, okay? There is no t there. So it is autonomous equation. So the last uh, terminology I want to show you here is equilibrium points or solutions of a differential equation. We call equilibrium points or equilibrium solutions. The other word that we use is critical points, fixed points, or stationary points. So they are all the same thing, okay? So what are those solutions? What are those points? The points where the rate of change is zero, that means the point where the derivative is zero is called equilibrium points, okay? So the points where the solutions are zero, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the points where the, um, the derivative is zero is called equilibrium points. So these equilibrium points or equilibrium solution help to find the solutions. Find the solutions, other solutions of ODE, ordinary differential equation. Okay, so if you are asked to find out uh, equilibrium points, what do you do? Is you basically just set that equals the derivative equals to zero there, okay? And then solve for y, then you will get equilibrium points there, okay, guys? So let us do one example for that. Consider a differential equation dx over dt equals to f of x. So we can say that this is the first order differential equation. Why it is first order? Because the highest derivative is 1, right? And then there is x on the right hand side. It is function of x. It may be x squared, x cubed there. So x times x, we don't know that. So we can just say that it is first order and autonomous. It is autonomous differential equation. Why? Because there is no explicitly t on the right hand side, okay? dx over dt equals to, in instead of fx, I'm taking a specific function x minus one times x minus two times x minus three. So this is the value of fx on the right side, right? We are, I'm taking the lowercase fx here, okay? So dx over dt equals to f of x. So this is not linear, right? Why? Because if you, if you distribute this, you'll get x cubed and then function of x squared, I mean function of, it is like x cubed, x squared, and then x terms there. So it is not linear, right? So it is uh, autonomous, there is no t, separate t there, and it is a first order because the highest derivative used here is one, okay? That's what we can say. Now, I want to find out the equilibrium points on this example. How do I find the equilibrium points? As I mentioned, to find out the equilibrium point, you just set that equals to zero. I set that equals to zero, what do I get? I got x minus one, x minus two, times x minus three equals to zero, right? So if you said x minus one equals to zero, you get x equals to one. Another value is x equals to and x equals to three. These are the equilibrium solutions. Equilibrium solutions are x equals to one, x equals two, and x equals to three. What that, that means, that means, so equilibrium solutions are those that the rate of change is zero. That is the derivative is zero. So the derivative is zero means the, 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 the answer is constant there, right? Meaning the value of x is one for all t. For any t, the value of x is one. That means the equilibrium solution is, okay? So the next thing we want to do here is draw the graph for fx versus x. So we want to draw the graph of x versus this function, the right-hand side function, okay? How do I draw the graph? And again, I don't know how to solve this equation now. We'll learn the, how to solve this type of equation later, but for now, let's say that you don't know how to solve this, okay? So I want to guess, I want to see how does the graph look like, okay? So first of all, what I want to do is, I want to plot the graph of f of x versus x. On the x-axis, I will plot x. On the y-axis, I will do fx. Or what is fx though? fx is dx over dt, right? So x prime or f of x is along y-axis, and along x-axis I'm writing x, okay? Now, the first thing to draw the graph is I will mark the equilibrium point or equilibrium solution. x equals to one, x equals to two, and x equals to three are the equilibrium solutions, right? Now, how does the graph of f of x, graph of this look like? So how do I find out that is, 
Let us look at this. On the left of 1, x equals to 1. On the left of 1, what is x prime? What is the sign of x prime or f of x? This is the x prime or f of x. This is the right side, right? So on the left, meaning, let's say uh, x equals to 0 0.05. If you, plot point, if you plug in 0 0.05 here, you get x 0 0.05 minus, this will be negative, this will be negative, this will be negative, right? If you plot x equals to 0 0.05. So the, the, the three negatives, product of three negative will be negative. So you can write x prime will be less than zero. That is f of x. This thing, this guy will be less than zero, right? So that means the graph of the function fx or x prime will be below x axis, below, below that axis, right? So, but at x equals to one, this function is zero, meaning it crossed through. Look at that. Below x, when x is less than one, x prime is negative. But between one and two, when x is between 1 and 2, what is x prime? Let us let me plug in point 1.5 as a test point here. 1.5 minus 1 is positive. 1.5 minus 2 is negative. 1.5 minus 3 is negative. So negative times negative is positive times positive is positive. So between, uh, between 1 and 2, f of x or x prime, because fx or x prime are the same thing, right? Because we are assuming that is fx. So which is equals to x prime. This is dx over dt is basically x prime. Okay, the derivative, right? Now at two, it is zero. So meaning the graph of fx or graph of x prime crosses or touches at one, two, and three, right? And then less than one, it is negative. Between one and two, it is positive, we saw that. And between two and three, it will be negative because you see that? Two, uh, let's say 2.5 as a test point, okay? 2 minus 2.5 minus 1 is positive 2.5 minus 2 is positive 2.5 minus 3 is negative so positive positive negative so it will be negative meaning the graph will go down right and at 3 it is 0 because if you plug in 3 you will get 0 right and if you take a test point 3.5 so between that is negative and for greater than 3 Let's say 4 as a test point. 4 minus 1 is positive. 4 minus 2 is positive. 4 minus 3 is positive. So this will be positive. So the graph of f of x will look like this. You see that? This is the graph of f of x versus x. Versus x. Okay. So you see that it is a little bit different from our usual graph. If it was like y equals to x minus 1, x minus 2, x minus 3, how do you draw the graph of that? You draw y on the right, y-axis and x on the x-axis, y, right? And then how do you draw the graph of this? It is 1, 2, 3, are the x-intercept. That's what we, use, we used to say, right, in college algebra. These are the x-intercept. How do you find the x-intercept? You said y equals to 0, right? And then you got 1, 2, and 3. And you can use calculator for this, or you can just guess the graph. So. Uh, for x less than 1, it will be negative, so the graph will stay below. Let me use different color. So below, the graph will stay stay below, below the x-axis, right? And then between 1 and 2, it will be positive. At 1 and at 2, it is 0. And then between 2 and 3, negative. And then this is similar idea, right? Well, the difference is, instead of y, we have x prime or fx. Okay, if it was given like dy over dt equals to y minus 1, y minus 2, y minus 3, you would write y on x-axis and then y prime on y-axis. Exactly the same way. Okay, this is what we did. Now, the thing is, this is x, this is x prime. So this horizontal line, this is called phase line or phase portrait. This is called phase portrait or the phase line. Now. We, ha we don't know the solution of uh, x8. We don't know what is uh, how does the graph of x look like because this graph is for fx or x prime. This graph is x prime, the graph of x prime. This graph is y, right, here. This graph is x prime. So we are plotting x prime against x. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to actually know 
the uh, we want to know the graph of x so again so this is not the initial value problem because the initial value is not given right so there may be many many solutions the many many graphs of x when we solve this equation you may get many many graphs depending on what constant you pick okay we'll do that the the actual solution later but for now based on this i want to draw the graph of x so i want to draw x versus t then it will be the graph of x because our goal here is to find the solution for x solve for x here it is dx over dt right if you want to do by like the the method how to find out the exact solution we will have to integrate to solve for x but here we are doing that by graph okay all right so let us see here so below one below one the graph is negative right for the negative what we do is we write it is kind of the x is decreasing why why the x is decreasing below one is look at this when x is less than one x prime is negative right meaning the graph is decreasing here you see that the graph is decreasing between one and two x prime is positive since the derivative is negative meaning the graph is decreasing if the derivative is positive the graph is increasing for the increasing we write a arrow that is that goes to the right side okay so it is like this all the numbers between 1 and 2 the graph is increasing why because the first derivative is 0 because this is first derivative this is the first derivative x prime it is positive between 1 and 2 it is positive it means the graph must be decreasing okay so again again let me show you when x is less than 1 when x is less than 1 x prime is less than 0 meaning it is decreasing you see that it is decreasing decreasing means x for the x this is line for x i'm writing going this way now i want to draw the lines for that for less than one the graph is decreasing meaning any point you start with it is going decreasing you see that so this is how you draw the graph any point going below decreasing the lines are decreasing for less than one the graph is decreasing okay you see that now for any point any value of x this is x between one and two this graph is a little bit tricky because we are plotting x versus x prime not x versus y we are plotting x versus x prime but the x prime is the derivative right if x prime is positive meaning the graph x must be increasing if x prime is negative at some interval then the graph must be decreasing that's what we are trying to do now between 2 and 3 between 2 and 3 x prime is negative that's what we got from here x prime negative why x prime is negative because when you plug in any test point between 2 and 3 we got dx over dt negative that means x prime is negative x prime negative means the graph is below now for negative we because this is line is x right for x is decreasing because x prime is negative decreasing means we write like this whenever it is decreasing we write a arrow that goes to the left when it is increasing we write a arrow that goes to the right side okay similarly for x greater than 3 it is positive so increasing it is decreasing there so it is increasing okay now depending on this increasing and decreasing sign we will draw the graph here okay so between one and two the lines are increasing there these are all the solutions x x lines okay these all these graphs are x because uh, there is more than one solution for a differential equation the solution of differential equation is not unique it is family of solution and when you integrate this you will get plus c right for taking different values of c you will get these different graphs if there is a, a initial condition then you will get only one solution right and then there will be only one graph that's how it works okay between two and three it is decreasing because it is going that way and the graph is below right so it is any number you start between two and three the initial condition between two and three 
the graph look like this and for greater than 3 the graph will look like that okay guys so this is how you draw the graph now what do you do you just make it long right so these are the, these are how the solution look like for the uh, for that differential equation the graph of the solution what is the solution of this function this differential equation solution will be xt will be the solution and how does the graph of xt look like this is how the graph of xt look like okay so the idea here is if you want to draw the graph of a solution of a differential equation without actually solving it what you can do is you just draw the graph of x versus x prime or if the equation is given like let's say suppose that equation is given like this let's say uh, dy over dy over dt equals to function of y let's say if an equation is given like this, then you will have to plot how? How do you, how would you plot? You will have to plot y versus y prime, one graph, and another graph will be uh, t versus y, like this, okay? And then here, for y versus y prime, you plot the equilibrium solution here. And for y versus t, you plot the equilibrium solution here. If the y, some values of y are negative or some values of y are positive, this is how you do it, okay? And then you find out whether the graph of y prime is positive or negative. If it is positive, then between those two, then you go up. If it's negative, decreasing. If it is because these graphs are decreasing, why? Because we see that x prime is negative at, on those two intervals. That's why we have these two part are negative. So any line that starts between uh, zero and one or below one, I would say below one it will decrease the line will decrease the solution will decrease these are all x x solutions this the we don't know what is the what is the equation for x but we know the graph will look like this for different values of the constant when you solve it you will make it some function and then plus c and picking the different values of c will give you different graphs there okay guys thank you